Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Swoop there, and here we are with another Prehistoric Kingdom update. So this here is the Dev Diary for February 2022. I've just quickly scrolled down to see how much we have to get through, but I haven't really read anything or looked into anything. So you guys will be seeing this with me for the first time. You're probably reading it or hearing about it for the second or third time because I'm always a little bit late to these dev diaries simply because I do live in Australia and they are often released when I am asleep and then I have to, have to hop up, go to work. So I don't tend to get to these until the evening when most of these things probably will have been seen by you guys. But a few of my followers did say they quite like to hear like a breakdown and I guess my thoughts on what I can see in these dev diaries. So away we go. So I'm going to get started on that. So first of all, I can see a little picture here of the Psittacosaurus Redux, or that is what I am expecting it to be when I scroll down. I did see a bigger picture of it as well. Um, so that is exciting coming up. It is, I think, the biggest of these species, but don't hold me to that. I would have to look into that myself, but I think a few of my followers have told me that's the case. So I'm really happy to see them in. They are still smallish though, and I am really after a lot more small dinosaurs. So I'm super happy to see these guys in. I'm loving this detail around their eyes as well. Like that looks so great. So let's dive into the dev diary for February, 2022. So in today's post, we're going to be exploring parts of our next beta update and delving into what our busy team's been working on. All right, so we also have a roadmap over on Trello. So if you're interested in seeing their roadmap, you can jump over there and you can have a look at it yourself because I'm on there quite regularly just checking what's going on. Modular items, so extra wall pieces and pillars will soon be added in our next update, allowing for new shapes and wall combinations in addition to pillar pieces. For all the wall materials, players will also be greeted with 1x1, 1x2 and 1x4 panels to create more interesting parts in their build, intricate parts in their builds. This is interesting. Like, I don't really see the purpose for, I guess, these pieces, these concrete pieces to be smaller. And the reason I say that is because we have the rescaling tool. So I don't know that we really need it. I can see the purpose for these ones with the wood uh, because when you stretch them, or scale them the wood stretches I mean it would be awesome if they didn't but I think it's probably going to be almost impossible to code that um, but I wouldn't know so we could speak to the devs about that but I feel like it probably would be so this though these panels when you drag them they stretch the wood so if you want them to line up sometimes it can get tricky so having smaller pieces of these is really handy um, but the other wall pieces that aren't sort of patterned like this I think they probably don't need to bother um, but the ones that are patterned it will be handy and useful to have those in builds and then I quite like the idea of these so the pillars um, for each wall pattern they'll be really handy I'll use those quite a lot so I like the go of that it'll save me having to build them myself um, it'll be a lot quicker and a lot more efficient for builders to use pillars rather than having to build their own pillars and it says as you can see there are a number of unique pillar models depending on their assigned material so this one is a glass one but you've got the bamboo one and then I think this is the tropical themed like another tropical themed one but I haven't used that this much because I'm building in a a cold biome at the moment in a, um, a tiger biome so in my beta park I'm not using a lot of these two materials here uh, animal welfare so I think this is going to really by the looks of it it's going to really interest the management um, people who are really kind of interested in managing rather than building so in our next update players will need to consider the welfare of their animals and the quality of their habitat beyond expected necessities like food and water to be fair food and water haven't really been an issue for me I haven't fed any of my dinosaurs at the moment in beta and none of them have passed away so I'm not sure that that's unless it is now going to be something where they are going to have issues from that's the only thing I can think of is um, that maybe they're going to incorporate that next exhibit cleanliness is a new and important feature with big consequences for your overall exhibit and zoo rating while pooping as you can see down here with the t-rex animals will drop small dung particles on the ground and create mounds while the particles disappear after a short amount of time dung mounds will build up over time as animals continue to poop nearby <laughs> players can minimize poops by supplying supplying high quality feed for their creatures. So it sounds like that's quite an intricate sort of part of the management of habitats, which is really interesting. And so there is gonna be a cleanliness um, degradation, I suppose. Excessive feces can greatly detract from a paddock's exhibit score and will make the animals unhappy. 
interesting. So they're similar, similarly to other games of this style, if the exhibits get too um, full of poop, then the animals will get unhappy. And whether or not they get diseased hasn't been said yet, but at this stage it just looks like it's going to make them unhappy. To manage exhibit cleanliness, players can either schedule a habitat for cleaning or employ some very lovable friends. The dung beetles. Okay. Found within the animal care category, the dung beetle nest is a small item that will automatically clean piles of poop within its radius. Oh, this is such a great idea. So initially I thought that the dung beetles might be going to be um, like an ambient animal, like in like a small exhibit where you kind of place them in and people can see them. But so what they're going to be is they're actually going to be, you can place them on the ground and then they will clean the poop for you. That's really interesting. So you can either schedule a habitat for cleaning. Okay, so we're going to have employees then perhaps. It doesn't say anything about employees, um, but it says we can schedule a habitat for cleaning. Hmm. Okay, it'd be interesting to see if there will be employees in the next update. And then the dung beetles. So yeah, that'll be great. So you pop them in and there's a radius that they can, I guess, clean around. So that's kind of cute. I wonder if we zoom right in whether we can actually see them. Maybe, because they're in this picture. I guess we have to wait and see. Exhibit score. Park managers wanting to operate large income zoos will need to pay attention to their exhibit scores. A new value used to keep track of how attractive a habitat is to visitors. High scores lead to better donations and collectible science points. All right, so there's something in there. Better donations. So people are going to be giving us money to get a donation. You can see down here in this image, average donation. So I guess that's average donation for the exhibit itself, which this exhibit seems to be called Prehistoric Safari. And collectible science points. So I think, I think, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think this collectible science points is actually related to... Um, if you're not playing sandbox, for example, if you're playing like a, um, I guess a challenge mode or something like that, you can collect these and you can unlock particular dinosaurs. So I'm guessing in sandbox, you have everything available to you. And then perhaps in these other modes, you collect these science points and you unlock things. But I don't know that for a fact. That's just me kind of speculating there. Uh, then we have, okay, so it's how much money it's earned in the last month. I'm making an assumption there. The total welfare of the animals, the score of the exhibit itself. So they're going quite detailed in the exhibits. You've got guest visibility. Oh, you might want to fix that up. Uh, total animal ratings, bonus decorations, bonus ecology. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm interested to find out what that is. Visible dung, visible, visible animal carcasses. Okay, and species repetition. Oh, species repetition. Like, I'm kind of assuming that you'd want to have some, some exhibits with like only one species in it. Okay, interesting. And then you've got all of these down here. So I'm guessing this is a camera. You can click on the exhibit itself. Maybe this is the biome. These are the animals that are in there. And then food, dung, disease. So it does look like maybe they're gonna open up a disease from the looks of this down here. More speculation by me. And then maybe this is maintenance. Not sure, maybe fence degradation or employees not too sure but there's nothing in here that i can see aside from perhaps this uh, that would kind of give me the idea that employees are coming soon uh, okay anyway we continue on to maximize an exhibit score players have a number of options at their disposal total animal ratings the collective value of all the animals decorations the number of decorative scenery objects in the habitat ecology housing animals from the same time period and country Aha, okay, that's kind of cool. These perks can be offset by poor exhibit, ma exhibit management, however. Visible dung, carcasses, and repeated species found elsewhere in the park. Okay, now it makes sense. We'll drop the overall exhibit score. So these species repetition means if you already have that particular dinosaur somewhere else in your park, then you're going to get a negative score. However, if you're housing dinosaurs of the same time period and country in the same exhibit and you don't have them anywhere else in your park, might I guess my assumption is this will be high and this will be low. So that's cool. That's actually a really cool feature. I like that. Players must also attempt to maximize the total welfare and visibility of a habitat to secure the best possible exhibit score. Right, okay. I think park management 
people that are really in, like really enjoy the park management side are going to love these new features in the next update. State of development. Early access is just around the corner. Yes, I bet everyone is super excited for that. It's been wonderful to see the community grow over the last few months. We can't wait for everyone to have access to Prehistoric Kingdom. Awesome. We're currently looking for additional animators. Oh, guys, if you are an animator, get on that because we want some amazing, more amazing dinosaurs. Continue, continue. We love it. Um, if you're an animator, send them a Twitter. All right, let's have a look. Upcoming developments. So what's coming beyond the next update? Yeah, give us the info because there's a few things before early access I think they're still intending to do. Right now, our environment team is hard at work on the upcoming temperate map. British, in it. <laughs> uh, that's cool. I can't wait for this. Um, I love new maps, so I can't wait for that. And we've got nine new foli foliage variants arriving. Awesome. I love all of those too. Alongside the new locale, offering more variety in the temperate biome. Okay, so these are the foliage variants that we're getting, which is great. I love as much foliage as I can get. Um, I'm obsessed with foliage, and I think giving us lots of foliage is a really good idea. The thing is, these are so versatile because we can make them smaller, bigger. We can do anything that we want with them. These could become bushes because we can make them super small. We can sink them into the ground. All of the rocks that they've given us are so versatile because we can scale them. So that's really amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. We're also very pleased, here it is, to unveil the long-awaited Psittacosaurus Redux. Yes, these little critters will be available in one of our final updates before launch, launching into early access. Awesome. Arriving with three alternate species. We can't wait for you to meet them all. All right, so here is the Psittacosaurus Redux. Looking great, by the way, and it's also in this with these new, this new foliage that's coming, um, but this background is still not the new background. So we've got very long grass. I really do hope they do something about the grass because it's kind of out of control at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that they give us an option to kind of shorten it down. But aside from that, the foliage is looking great. The dinosaur itself is looking amazing. I love all these little quills on its spine and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on another small dinosaur. So that's going to be great. Community spotlight. We've got a video by Simply Savannah, uh, a what could this be? A shop information point created by Warpath and then an image taken by Sobad. This is a great screenshot. Smash that, Sobad. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. This is the case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll back up and open the Trello board for all of those that haven't seen it before. So I'll just open this up. You can have a quick look. So here are the planned beta updates. This is early access. So here you have what we are going to have available to us in early access, and then I'll go backwards. All right, so we've got the tropical map, Nigel Marvin, new species. So quite a few new species, construction items, foliage, and a research system. So when early access is released in April, all of these things become available. Now, we haven't actually had this beta update yet. So, and you can see here, we've got two or three, we've got three more updates before early access. So there is a few things for them to do. However, um, these are the things that they're telling us they're already working on. So they're already working on the Psittacosaurus Redux, which I assume is coming in beta 0.5. They've just told us about the temperate map. They've just told us about the foliage and they likely are going to have a few more construction items going on. So maybe they've got a secret species coming out that they haven't kind of dropped yet. They haven't sort of given us any hints about. Then we've got guest welfare and modules. So I'm guessing these, maybe these are just, mm, I'm not too sure. I'm not going to actually speculate on those. And then we've got another two species here and more foliage. And then here you can see we've just got audio, wind simulation and the camera mix sounds. So there is a few things to come, but a lot of people have been talking about um, it being rushed, like being rushed through because we still haven't got this update and early access is in April. However, I think they still have time because I believe this April update is going to be quite late April and we're only in early March now. So they still pretty much have um, a couple of months really. Um, and if this beta 0.5 is nearly finished, like they're working hard behind the scenes to kind of complete this one off, this one hasn't quite come out yet. Maybe they'll skip one of these. Maybe they'll put one or two together. I'm not sure. Like this is just me kind of just talking um, my thoughts out aloud but I do think that they're going to manage most of this before this but it's going to be tight like I mean it will be tight but I don't think it's going to be rushed and 
for everyone that's saying that early access won't be out in April, it will be out in April. I would put money on it that it will be in out, out in April. Um, and then people just need to realise that it is still going to be an early access game. Like, it's not going to be a completed game because so many people have been playing it, we've had access to it, a lot of people have been watching it, people are excited to play it. It is still going to be in early access and it's still going to be being developed. And I think a lot of people forget that when games are in early access, particularly when there's hype around pre- like games like this, like Prehistoric Kingdom, when lots of people want to get their hands on it, they can't wait to play it. They've seen lots of people on YouTube play it, which is great. It's so great for the team. They'll be in a better position to make the game better if lots of people purchase the early access. So definitely get yourself the early access, but just bear in mind that it isn't a finished game. They are still going to be updating it. They're still going to be tweaking it. They're still going to be making it better and they're going to be adding things to it. And I think that's something to, that's really important to think about. Aside from that, guys, I cannot wait for you all to have it so we can have more people building. We can be sharing more things and I'm really looking forward to the next update because I think it's going to reinvigorate my love for the game. I've been kind of dragging my feet a little bit. I have been working full time as well, which I wasn't over the Christmas period. So working full time really makes it tricky for me to sit down for six hours and build. Um, but I am going to give it a go on the weekend. So I'm hoping that you guys get a full video on the weekend. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all your support. If you are enjoying my content, please make sure that you do hit that like button and drop a comment if you have a few seconds. Thank you so much. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.